crap table, the guys were artists at changing the dice, you know. They'd pick them out with a rake and then throw them back to the guy and give him, give him a set of dice that uh, would shoot 11 the first time out, and then he'd change them so he crap every time. The roots of the gambling that flourished in the early 20th century in America go back to America's infancy. Many of the men who grace our currency today were known gamblers, including Thomas Jefferson and Andrew Jackson, who killed a man in a duel over a gambling debt. By the 1830s, card games like Pharaoh became popular with outlaws. Many gambling towns were evolving into resort destinations for wealthy vacationers. Saratoga, well, the, the town started way back, you know, during the, the revolution. I mean, it was, it was a big, a big battle there. Um, and then it, it's when they discovered the hot springs, it became a vacation area. High society went there, everybody knew it, but they were not legal. Even United States Senator John Old Smoke Morrissey saw opportunity in Saratoga and opened several casinos which he owned at the same time he served in Congress. It was a very elegant place, and uh, the wealthiest of wealthiest went there. All the generals from the Civil War, uh, the Vanderbilts, it was a, a very upscale place. On the other side of the country, towns like Reno and Virginia City prospered with Gold Rush 49ers. San Francisco had the fanciest clubs of all, with the famous El Dorado being one of the first. It is said that by 1850, the city had a thousand legal gambling houses and a population of just 25,000. Folks would come in from the uh, hills and would actually bet uh, gold dust or a little, a little nuggets as well as, as cash. In the 1860s, the California legislature made gambling illegal, but that didn't mean people stopped gambling. It just went underground. The model for the type of casinos that emerged in Las Vegas were those that were developed in San Francisco during the gold rush, uh, where you had entertainment, you had music, you had pretty girls, you had lots of noise, uh, and you gambled around the clock. That became the prototype. Many gamblers started their careers when they were very young. This was the case for Russian immigrants Charlie and Emo Resnick, who learned early that hustling was good for fun and profit. When my, uh, my uncle and father were kids selling newspapers in New York, and amongst other things, they, uh, they had crap games, nickel crap games. I mean, they, were, they started when they were 9, 10 years old. Eventually, after running illegal clubs in Detroit, the Resnick brothers would be vested owners in at least six legal casino resorts in Nevada, including the old El Rancho in Las Vegas, as well as the Cal Neva and Biltmore on Lake Tahoe. By 1920, with the passing of the controversial 18th Amendment, which began prohibition, men intent on making their fortunes in America found a liquid way to riches. And one uncle became a big rail with the Cleveland Syndicate. He, they used to run whiskey on trucks, and he, he was a machine gunner on the back. Waterways close to U.S. borders became heavy with rum running boats carting liquor into the country. The ports around Galveston, Texas were no exception. Galveston, popular with seamen, had long since developed a reputation for after hours fun and of course games. The 20s mostly is when uh, after World War I is when it really exploded into a, a gambling mecca of sorts. Native Dick Richards Sr. was knee-deep in illegal activity in Galveston and making a fortune during Prohibition. He showed me four-story building that he owned in downtown Houston at one time. Had a fleet of bulletproof Hudsons, uh, an airplane, a ship, a large boat that went up and down the uh, Houston Channel uh, with the illegal um, uh, booze, uh, but he also had, ran gambling. The transition from run-running to gambling hall was an easy one. Besides, everyone knew prohibition wouldn't last forever. And so many of these uh, bootleggers became very expert after 1933 in operating gambling operations in Detroit, Cleveland, New York, Boston, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, etc. There was a little uh, electric sign above the door. It said Dick's Lamplighter Club. Texas was a dry state. So he was breaking the law 24 hours a day just by serving liquor. He didn't even have to gamble to break the law. It was relatively small. Uh, it had just enough room for a, a bar that I, I think probably sat about 10 people. 
Uh, there was room for a poker uh, table, a regulation poker table, and a 21 game that was sat in the corner.